This ring is worn proudly by every officer graduated from the United States Naval Academy. It is truly a ring of valor. The city of Annapolis, a historic community. In the heart of this city is another community. This is a unique community, for it is here that young men from all walks of life learn one of the most difficult and exacting professions. It is here in a heritage of valor and glory that midshipmen earn the right to wear the ring. The ring is a symbol of honor, strength, and power in every part of the world. It's a symbol of control over the awesome forces of modern warfare. A symbol of professional skill. A symbol of seamanship. symbol of science. It is a symbol of sportsmanship. It is a symbol, too, of moral and religious conviction. successfully present wherever man moves, on the sea, under the sea, in the air, and tomorrow, in space. The ring is not easy to come by. Standards are high at the academy, and so is the caliber of its midshipmen. How does a man acquire this symbol of honor and glory? Well, it begins like this. Early in July, the plebes of the new fourth class arrive. They come from near and far. From every walk of life. From city, farm, and from everywhere in between. Tall, short, blonde, dark, and red-headed. Some are shy, some are assured, but they all have one thing in common. Everyone stands high in leadership, scholastic ability, and physical fitness. A fine group of young men who meet the standards of the academy. And admission in itself carries a real distinction. There's much to be done in a short time. Nothing turns a civilian into a military man faster than a new outfit of uniform issue. There are 40 uniforms or combinations of uniforms that each midshipman will be required to wear, from sailing togs to formal full dress. Everything is done in orderly fashion and habits begin to develop that will last a lifetime. If any of the new plebes expected the austerity and stark surroundings of a typical military barracks, they had a pleasant surprise. 
Bancroft Hall is a city unto itself, so large that its residents need a scale model of the layout to learn where they are and where they're going. With a roof over their heads and a uniform on their backs, the new fourth classmen, or plebes as they are commonly called, begin their first weeks at the academy. Plebe summer is designed to bridge the gap between civilian and academy life. During these weeks, the new men learn basic military procedures, discipline, and the 101 non-academic details that they will be expected to know, almost instinctively, over the years to come. For many of the plebes, this is their first experience on water, and also the first experience in budgeting time. The plebe soon learns that time is the most precious commodity he has. Only through its efficient management can he hope to complete all the athletic and academic activities required for his growth as a midshipman. At the end of plebe summer is parents' weekend, when mothers and fathers arrive to see what has happened to their boys in the first weeks of academy life. Year in and year out, the plebe's parents arrive to find a boy who has grown in every way in seven short weeks. There is a creed at the academy called the mission. It sets forth the uncompromising moral standards and high resolve for a life of service to the Navy. This is what it says, to develop midshipmen morally, mentally, and physically, and to imbue them with the highest ideals of duty, honor, and loyalty. In order to provide graduates who are dedicated to a career of naval service and have potential for future development in mind and character, to assume the highest responsibilities of command, citizenship, and government. In keeping with this precept, religious participation is an academy requirement. Almighty Father, whose way is in the sea and whose paths are in the great waters, whose command is over all and whose love never faileth, let me be aware of thy presence and obedient to thy will. Give me the will to do the work of a man and to accept my share of responsibilities with a strong heart and a cheerful mind. Make me considerate of those entrusted to my leadership and faithful to the duties my country has entrusted to me. The academic year gets underway and the full brigade settles down to hard work. The real unswerving purpose of the Naval Academy is to educate and produce fine men and fine officers. Men skilled in every phase of naval activity. Today that covers a tremendous scope, science, engineering and the liberal arts. The curriculum is on a par with all of the nation's leading universities. Most of the non-military subjects are taught by civilian instructors and professors, many numbering among the finest and most respected in their fields. <laughs> 
As in most universities, students at Annapolis can now be exempt from required courses if they have previously mastered the subject and have demonstrated their proficiency to academy officials. Such exemptions permit midshipmen to spend additional time pursuing advanced studies in the same field or to undertake work beyond the basic curriculum. By doing this, he can major in any one of a number of fields, from the sciences to the humanities. Learning specific weapons, memorizing tactical data, are but memories of a bygone era. The emphasis today is for each midshipman to achieve a solid understanding of the principles underlying the complex, dynamic forces he will one day use as a naval officer. These forces may consist of conventional explosives, propellants, or orbital mechanics. This is a towing tank developed at the academy. Midshipmen are encouraged to experiment with models built to test theories which may one day contribute to the development of new and better ship designs. In this tank, they can create waves and other hydrodynamic actions which simulate exactly the conditions that prevail in the sea. In the engineering department is another piece of laboratory equipment used in the study of fluid mechanics and aerodynamics. The Naval Academy's large wind tunnel permits the observation of airfoil designs under varying conditions. What they learn today as a midshipman and apply tomorrow as a naval officer may well affect the success of our future programs in space. Deep in every warship is a room similar to this the Combat Information Center, or CIC. Here, combat and navigational information is collected electronically, interpreted, and passed on to the appropriate parts of the ship. This trainer at the academy permits the midshipmen to perform exactly as they would under actual operating conditions. From a nearby room, an instructor controls the signals transmitted to various instruments. The operators must plot and interpret the information in seconds. The fact that they do it so well is a tribute to their science, math, and engineering training. Work in the class and in the laboratories is balanced by many hours of research and study. This is the library at Bancroft Hall, readily accessible to the dormitories. Both the Bancroft Hall library and the main library offer the midshipman a quiet retreat where he can pursue his subject. The atmosphere is conducive to concentration and at the same time is enhanced with constant reminders of the midshipman's naval heritage. Few institutions are privileged to offer such a legacy. Few students are privileged to study in such an academic environment. An undying legend of the United States Navy is that of John Paul Jones. Here is the crypt where his remains are eternally preserved beneath the academy chapel. The academy is also a place of contrasts. In the midst of this setting, rich in tradition and history, a subcritical nuclear reactor generates a steady flow of induced radiation. For the students, operating the reactor is not the important thing. But understanding the nature of the forces involved is. Harnessing the power of the atom is fundamental to naval engineering today. By the time these young men join the fleet, its uses may have multiplied many times. Solving equations basic to nuclear physics requires knowledge of computers. In fact, computers are as necessary and as common today as the slide rule of only a few years ago. Computers have a language all their own. Once the midshipman learns how to ask questions in digital sequence, 
a whole new world opens up for him. Using the traditional manual methods of computation, the student could easily have taken days or even weeks to solve a problem that the computer handles in a matter of seconds. The science of oceanography is as new as the exploration of space. The classroom, in many cases, is as large as the ocean itself. Midshipmen through field trips soon appreciate the complexity of this great sea environment. Before the Navy can maintain control upon the sea, it must know its dynamics, its forces, its hidden characteristics. Studies in the humanities are of increasing importance today. The ideas and concepts set forth by the creative minds of the past and present enable the naval officer to better understand contemporary society, the complex relationships between peoples, governments, and cultures. A small number of outstanding students who have excelled academically during their first three years are permitted to carry out a research project of their own choosing during their fourth year. These men are called Trident Scholars. They are exempt from the regular curriculum. No academic achievement rewards the faculty as much as the display of critical thinking so evident in the routine work of the Trident Scholar. Monsieur Putz, dans quel port de France... In the Foreign Language Department, the methods are progressive and the facilities among the most up-to-date you will find anywhere. Et vous, Monsieur Boivin, qu'avez-vous vu à Paris? À Paris, j'ai vu l'Arc de Triomphe, le Tour Eiffel, le Champs-Élysées, le tomb tombeau Napoléon. Le tombeau de Napoléon. Le tombeau de Napoléon, la Seine. Weekend activities with receptions and Saturday night hops are part of the life of all upperclassmen. At these functions, they obtain the ease and poise needed to carry out an officer's social responsibilities the world over. Girls are always eager for academy invitations, and the glamour of the uniform still works its magic. All of the romance isn't on the dance floor. The 44-foot racing yawls make a mighty impressive setting, particularly for some winsome lass who has never seen blue water. the sport and the academy has it, and has a stack of trophies in most of them. Sports are mandatory. Everybody plays something. Hard, well, and for a reason to develop the competitive spirit and sense of fair play that go to make the complete man. <laughs> Navy football teams have amassed their full share of glory over the years. Everybody at the academy lives and breathes football during the fall. This field house is probably the most magnificent in the country. One of its most startling aspects is its full-scale indoor baseball diamond. Not softball, the real McCoy.
Its facilities and equipment include everything an athlete could desire. There are 21 intercollegiate and 28 intramural sports available. Every member of the brigade participates in one or more sports that appeals to him. It seems fitting for the academy to excel on the water, and it does. One of the most colorful moments of seagoing sport is the beginning of the Bermuda race, one of the major sailing events attracting worldwide interest. The largest fleet of ocean racing craft in this race is manned by midshipmen from Annapolis. This is wind, sea, and sail at its saltiest. And the midshipmen get the feel of deep water in a way they'll never forget. Hard work and hard play require real nourishment. And the academy provides it. Three times a day, a pair of momentous forces come together. First is superior food prepared in fantastic quantities, and the second, more than 4,000 starving midshipmen. This is the largest single dining hall in the world. Right now, you are looking at only one of three modern wings that together accommodate 4,200 midshipmen at one sitting. The key to this entire operation is unbelievable efficiency and accurate timing. As the brigade enters the dining hall, the main course is just coming off the broiler. One ton of sizzling steaks takes its place in a pre-planned sequence with the rest of the meal. Within one minute from the time the brigade has entered the hall, a complete meal, piping hot, is set before each man. Anyone who has ever been to the academy will tell you loud and long that its chow is hard to beat. The Navy being the Navy, the first and most important association is with the water. Seamanship is basic, of course, in the academy curriculum. On this 80-foot YP craft, Midshipmen get the feel of the sea, learn the elements of practical navigation, and the rules of the nautical road. Departing on a summer cruise means the beginning of more advanced seamanship, real blue water type. On the summer cruises, midshipmen serve on ships of the fleet. Destroyers, frigates, carriers, submarines, and transports. During their first cruise, they learn shipboard routine, get a feel for the many departments aboard ships, and what each department does. On their second cruises, upperclassmen take on real responsibility. 
finding themselves standing regular watches underway, assuming some of the duties expected of all regular seagoing officers. And like regular seagoing officers, the midshipmen get their share of liberty around the world. During one of the summers, midshipmen participate in aviation training at a naval air station. The station itself is a marvel of modern aviation know-how, and the equipment they work with is the best. Even aboard an air station, you can't keep a midshipman out of the water. Pre-flight instruction, learning the mechanics of naval aviation. But of course, the big thrill is flying. And it's done with care, precision, and the finest instruction. The submarine is a weapon of ever-increasing importance. Men who man them today and tomorrow will carry responsibility impossible to exaggerate. Some midshipmen have a chance to learn about these responsibilities firsthand on one of their summer cruises. From the academy will come the men who will command these incredible craft and their awesome power. From the academy will also come many of the Marine Corps' finest officers. Each midshipman will participate in a complete amphibious operation. In a show like this, every seat is on the 50-yard line, and every member of the brigade gets a taste of simulated combat from the Marines' point of view. If training in the air, on the sea, and with the Marines doesn't provide enough action, Academy men can volunteer for additional summer cruise training in a variety of special assignments. parade, the end of another year, another year of effort, another year of achievement, another milestone attained on the long road toward leadership. June week, the time of the year when the midshipmen and their instructors proudly experience the satisfaction of having done their share in the building of a stronger America. June week means much to many. For the boys who came last summer, it means the end of a tough first year. Celebrated by climbing a well-breezed monument to new glory as a third classman. The second classman June week means perhaps the most memorable day of their four years at the academy. 
for it is the day of the ring dance. It is at the ring dance that they will receive the class ring from the hands of their dates. This ring from now on will bind in comradeship the men of each class. It will symbolize for them the Academy's proud heritage. At the ring dance, the midshipman's girl wears his ring on a ribbon around her neck. The binnacle contains waters from the seven seas. was a time when a man feels he has the world on a string, this is it. For the first classman, June week is an end and a beginning. The end of four years of work and study as members of the Brigade of Midshipmen at Annapolis. And it is a beginning, a beginning of years of service as officers of the United States Navy all over the world. Service as naval officers includes opportunity to further study. The Navy Postgraduate School at Monterey, California. The Nuclear Power School at Bainbridge, Maryland. Or any one of the many leading civilian universities. Wherever he goes, whatever the assignment, each man who wears the Academy ring embarks upon a splendid, worthwhile career, richly rewarding in the highest traditions of the United States Navy.